Ever wish you could click little tabs inside your Excel sheet and have the whole table changed like magic without switching worksheets? All in the same sheet, same area, no scrolling, no mess. Well, that's exactly what we're building today. Tabs inside Excel using shapes and a tiny bit of VBA. We're going to use one worksheet and on that one worksheet, we'll have three different sets of data. Instead of creating three different sheets, we'll place these three tables side by side on the same sheet, each one in its own block of columns. In my example workbook, I have a sheet called Region Tabs. At the top in cell B1, I've written a little title, Melon Training Sales. Below that, I've left some blank space where the tab buttons will go. We'll fill that space with our shapes in a moment. Down a bit lower, I've placed three tables, one for each region. North region data in columns B to G, central region data in columns I to N, and south region data in columns P to U. At the moment, they're all visible together, and our goal is to make it so that only one of these is visible at a time, depending on which tab we click. Now let's build the tab buttons that sit above the data and control what we see. Go to the Insert tab on the ribbon. In the Illustrations group, click on Shapes. From the Shapes menu, choose the rounded rectangle. This works nicely as a tab shape. Move your mouse onto the sheet and click and drag to draw a shape where you want the first tab. Don't worry if it's not perfect, we'll clean it up. When you let go, Excel will show the Shape Format tab at the top. This lets you style the shape. With the shape selected, you can adjust its size. For example, you can set the height to around 0.5 and the width to around 1.5. It just needs to be wide enough for the text North, Central, or South. Then pick a fill color from the Shape Style section. The first version of the tab will be the active style, so use a stronger color, like a deeper blue or green. Click on Shape Outline and choose No Outline so it looks cleaner. Now click inside the shape and type North Region or simply North. Select the text and make it bold, increase the font size a bit, and center it both horizontally and vertically so it looks like a real tab label. You now have your first on tab, the one that will show when the north region is selected. We need a tab for each region, north, central, and south. Click on the north tab shape to select it. Hold down control and drag the shape to the right. Excel will make a copy of it and keep it roughly in a straight line. Holding shift as well can help keep it aligned horizontally. Then copy again, so in the end you have three shapes in a row. On the second one, change the text to Central. On the third one, change the text to South. Make sure all three have bold, readable text and the words are centered inside the shapes. Right now, all three shapes use the active style. These will be our on versions for each region. When North is selected, its tab should look active, and Central and South should look dimmed or off. To do this, we'll create a second set of shapes for each tab with a lighter style. First, select all three existing tabs, and you can click on the first one, and then hold Control and click the other two. With all three selected, hold Control and drag them down a little or to the side. That makes three copies. These three new shapes will be the off versions. With the three copied shapes still active, go back to the Shape Format tab. Choose a lighter style in Shape Styles, maybe a pale gray or a soft color that clearly looks less active than the original ones. Leave the text the same, North, Central, and South. Now you have six shapes in total, three active looking tabs and three inactive looking tabs. To give each shape a useful name, this is important because the code will use these names to show and hide the right shapes. We'll use this naming style. For the North tab, North On and North Off. For the Central tab, Central On and Central Off. For the South tab, South On and South Off. To rename a shape, click on it. Look above the sheet, just to the left of the formula bar, there is a small box called Name Box. When the shape is selected, that box shows its name. 
something like Rectangle Rounded Corners 1. Click in the name box, delete the old name, type your new name, for example, North On, and press Enter. Notice the underscore that I put between the two words. I don't want space between them. Pressing Enter is very important. If you don't, Excel won't store the new name. Now repeat this for all six shapes. The Gray North tab, North Off. The Bright Central tab, Central On. The Gray Central tab, Central Off. The Bright South tab, South On. And the Gray South tab, South Off. If you want to double check, open the Selections pane. Go to the Page Layout tab and in the Arrange group, click Selection Pane. On the right, you'll see a list of all shapes. You should see the six names there. If anything doesn't match, you can click on the name in that list and type a new name there too. Right now, the on and off versions may not be sitting exactly on top of each other. We want each pair to be perfectly aligned so that the code can simply show one and hide the other. In the selection pane or directly on the sheet, select North On and North Off at the same time by holding Control while clicking each one. With both selected, go to the Shape Format tab, click Align and choose Align Left. Then click Align again and choose Align Top. Now the North On and Off shapes share the exact same position. Repeat this for Central On with Central Off. and for South On with South Off. Once you've done this, you'll only see a set of tabs on the sheet because each on-off pair is stacked. Now we'll write a tiny bit of VBA code, so we need the Developer tab. If the Developer tab is already visible in your ribbon, you're good. If not, right-click on any empty space on the ribbon and choose Customize the Ribbon. On the right side of the window that opens, you'll see a list of main tabs. Find Developer and Tickets checkbox. Click OK. You should now see the Developer tab at the top of Excel. Click on the Developer tab. In the Code group, click on Visual Basic. You can also press Alt plus F11 to open it. The VBA editor will open in a new window. At the top menu, click Insert and then Module. A new module opens with a blank white area where you can write codes. We're going to create three small macros. Tab North to show the North region, Tab Central to show the Central region, and Tab South to show the South region. Each macro will hide the columns for the other regions, show the columns for its own region, and turn the matching tab on while turning the others off. Here is the code you can use. I have an entire code in the second worksheet of the Excel file, so you can copy it. You can copy this entire code and paste it into the new module you just created. By the way, if you're watching this and thinking, okay, this macro stuff is actually kind of cool, but I still feel like a non-programmer, I've built a full step-by-step -step course exactly for you. It's called Excel Macros and Excel VBA for Non-Programmers, and it takes you from zero to writing your own useful macros without drowning you in nerdy theory. The lessons are short, super practical, and you get downloadable Excel files so you can follow along and actually do the things I'm showing you, and not just watch. You can check it out using the link in the description. Alright, back to our tutorial. Make sure the column ranges match where your tables are. Also, make sure the shape names in the code are exactly the same as the names you used earlier. Once you're done, you can close the VBA editor. When you save the workbook, remember to save it as macroenabledworkbook.xlsm, or the macros won't be saved. Back on the worksheet, we now want to turn each tab to run its own macro when we click it. First, highlight the North Off and North On shapes from the Selection pane. Then right-click on the North Tab Shape. In the menu that appears, click Assign Macro. In the list of macros, choose Tab underscore North and then click OK. 
Now highlight both Central On and Central Off, and then right click on the Central tab Shape, choose Assign Macro, and pick Tab Central. Do the same for the South tab Shape with Tab South, and now each tab is linked to its own macro. To keep your tabs and decorative shapes in place, even when you insert rows or columns, open the selection pane again from the Page Layout tab. I already have mine open. Hold Control and click to select all the tab shapes. Right click on one of them and choose Size and Properties. Under Properties, select Don't Move or Size with Cells. Now Excel will leave your shapes where they are, even if you change the grid. Time to try it out. Click on the North tab. If everything is wired correctly, the North region columns will be visible, the Central and South columns will be hidden, the North tab will show in its On style, and Central and South will appear off. Now click on the Central tab. You should only see the Central region table in the middle. The other regions hide. Then click on the South tab. Now only the South region table appears on the right and the others disappear. If nothing happens or if something weird happens, check out a few things. Are the macros enabled when you open the file? Do the column letters in your VBA code match the actual location of your tables? Are the shape names in the code spelled exactly the same as in the selection pane? Did you assign the correct macro to the correct tab? Usually the problem is just a small spelling mistake or a mismatch between name in the code and shape name. And that's how you build tabs inside of one Excel sheet using shapes and a bit of VBA. We took three regions, built three tables, designed custom tabs, wrote three simple macros, and now with one click we can switch between North, Central, and South. If this was helpful, Tap that like button so the YouTube algorithm doesn't hide me in the south region somewhere. If you're new here, subscribe for more easy Excel tips and click the bell so you don't miss the next tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.